Could you uh, pull that line open for me on the left? Okay, so again, I'm going to do this pretty quickly. Caitlin, can you all pay attention this way? Um, you need to read 18.2 and 18.3 over the next tonight and, and tomorrow night. Again, we have, a, we have a test Friday, so it would probably be good to finish it tonight. Um, <coughs> but we know about the history of the earth from the layers of rock. Because rock, sedimentary rock, develops in layers. When oceans wash sand from the... When the, when the rivers cut through the, the continents, they tear up the rock into little sand grains, deposit the sand in the ocean, and, the, and it forms layers. And, and that will harden into rock. Sedimentary. Sedimentary rock. And over time, that rock can be pushed <coughs> up by tectonic forces, and so the bottom of the ocean can become mountains. And you can see the layers there. You see how it's layered? If you find fossils way down in the rock, those are very old fossils. And fossils real high up in the rock, those are very recent fossils. And you can radioactively date the rock and tell exactly how old those fossils are. Radioactive dating techniques are very accurate. So they can tell you that this layer is <coughs> 2 billion years old and up here is 1 billion years old and in between it is a billion and a half and so forth. And so you can get an idea of all the different fossils and what has existed on Earth in the past. And we find that organisms that used to exist are very different than organisms that there are now. I know because I went out there and looked at it. That's me, age eight. You see the sedimentary rock back there? Where was that? That's the Painted Desert in New Mexico. You're really tan. I'm, sta I'm really tan and I'm standing on the edge of a cliff. I remember that picture because my dad said, get closer to the edge. I want you on the edge. And I was like, I don't want to be on the edge scared. There's me at the Rift Geyser in Yellowstone. There's me at Yellowstone National Park with my sister and mom. There's me with my dad on the same trip. Did you guys drive out there? Yep. We drove. Yeah. Like two weeks. It was like the movie Vacation. It was terrible. <laughs> And so there are all these fossils out there in the rocks. These are extinct <laughs> organisms. All these are from extinct organisms. Trilobites, ichthyosaurs, placoderms, yeah, ammonites, yeah. dinosaurs. There's a kid standing in a dinosaur footprint. If he were standing there 200 million years ago, he'd have been stepped on. Because you can see the bottom of the feet in the print there. That's not me. That was mud, you see, and the dinosaur walked through it, and then the mud hardened into rock. Are all those holes part of one print? Yeah, that's one footprint. Whoa. Where is that? That's it's out there crazy. in the desert, desert in the west somewhere. There's a scorpion in amber. Amber is tree sap that hardens. Like Jurassic Park. Like, yeah, in Jurassic Park, they captured insects in amber, sucked the blood out of the mosquitoes, and the mosquitoes have been sucking on dinosaurs, and so they had dinosaur blood. Oh, they took the, okay. took the DNA yeah. from the dinosaur blood from the mosquitoes in the amber. That's how they made the dinosaurs. They can't really do that, but it's, it's cool, an extra cool credit idea. Jurassic Park. Petrified idea. wood is trees that have been preserved. And they're now made of stone. That's really scary. I don't have time to show you all the video. 
We know that the first cells that ever were around, we know what they were like. They had membranes and DNA and they had ribosomes. And they evolved into the archaea and the bacteria. And then the eukaryotes evolved. Those are more complicated cells. Eukaryotes are most closely related to archaea. <laughs> Mitochondrions were taken in by cells. And those evolved into the animals and fungi and protists. What was that again? Mitochondrions. Remember mitochondrions were once free living? Yeah. Did we talk about this before? Mm -hmm. So some of the bacteria were taken in to some of these eukaryotic cells to become more complicated cells. What did archaea? Archaea? Uh -huh. They were just a kind of kind of like bacteria that kind of lived in difficult places to live, like hot places or salty places. Or places without oxygen. We're going to study archaea and bacteria in more detail coming up pretty soon in a, in a later chapter. If you, if you can wait for it. Some of these organisms took in chloroplasts, which were also free living bacteria, and became the plants. And the plants evolved from them. So there's a discussion about how the modern living things, plants and protists and fungi and animals, all evolved from some of these earlier cells. But what, this is what we're going to spend much of the rest of the year on, talking about these groups, seeing how they came about. So that's all second semester stuff. If you don't understand this whole thing right now, that's OK. We're going to get into it more later. Oh, here's, see, here's this early cell. Kind of evolved to have these membranes inside of it. See, yeah, it's pretty simple. And then endoplasmic reticulum evolves. And then there it takes in a bacteria. Now it's got mitochondrions. And it takes in a chloroplast. <coughs> and now we got a more modern cell. Isn't that interesting? I know I'm going through this fast. I want you to read about it. We can set up a timeline. This is what our activity is. We're going to go outside and do this today. You get to go outside. And we know from our timeline and from all the fossils that we have in the past and from looking at DNA evidence and all sorts of things that the history of the Earth, the Earth is about 4.6 billion years old. There's a nice table on page 336 that summarizes the history of the Earth. <clears throat> it's basically divided into four eras. An era is a long period of time or an era. The Precambrian is the longest time period. That's real old. That's when the Earth first formed and the first cells came about in the oceans. Precambrian? Precambrian time. When you first got oxygen to accumulate in the atmosphere. Oxygen was made by photosynthesizing cells that produced oxygen through photosynthesis. And in that time, you got eukaryotic cells evolved. And finally, protists. And toward the end of the Precambrian, soft-bodied invertebrates like jellyfish. So in Precambrian, you mostly had small, single-celled organisms that you couldn't even see without a microscope. Living in the oceans, there was nothing on land. How come jellyfish haven't changed They do pretty well the way they are. They have changed some. They haven't changed much. They got a pretty good, pretty
pretty good uh, plan the way they are. They're actually becoming more and more types of jellyfish around. Fox jellyfish. Mm -hmm. Jellyfish population is going way up recently because of human activity. Um, a lot of the things in, in the sea are dying. Uh, you know, we're, we're fishing a lot and catching all the fish and polluting and a lot of the corals and stuff are dying and that leaves more room for jellyfish. That's the radiation. We, we don't really eat jellyfish or anything like that, so they're, they do great. Jellyfish. We ate jellyfish and their numbers are good. Now. But we, we eat fish. After the Precambrian, you have the Paleozoic era, and this is when life starts coming on to land. <coughs> you get algae flourishing in the oceans, and then some of the algae washes up on the shores and evolves into land plants. And you get the first, uh, you get a bunch of fish evolving in the seas, and some of the fish crawl up onto land and become amphibians evolve into amphibians, I should say. So, the Paleozoic era is kind of the evolution of organisms coming onto land. That's the second era. The third era is called the Mesozoic. The Mesozoic is when these animals that are on the land really start to diversify and become all sorts of different creatures and the reptiles evolve and the reptiles dominate the earth that's the mesozoic era you get reptiles all over the earth that's the age of the dinosaurs you see the jurassic there you're probably familiar with jurassic park that's a period not an era there are several periods here You can see throughout this time these mass extinctions. Great times when lots of different species died. 50% of all species, 48% of all species, 57% of all species gone. Why does that happen? Several reasons. Look at this, 83 species died out here at the end of the Permian period. There are two major events that cause mass extinctions. One are asteroids hitting the Earth, blowing up a bunch of debris, causing fires all across the Earth, causing the planet to change rapidly. In rapid changes, organisms go extinct. Organisms can't evolve because evolution is kind of a slow process. So lots of organisms go extinct when that happens. Another reason is when all the continents kind of collide to, with one another. Y'all heard of continental drift before? If two continents collide, it produces huge amounts of volcanic activity. And so there are time periods in Earth when continents collide, producing a bunch of volcanic activity that puts up so much debris that it makes the Earth, it covers the skies, and the Earth becomes real cold rather quickly. Snowball Earth, right? Kind of like that, yeah. So, that can cause mass extinctions. So we've had five great mass extinctions in the history of the Earth because of those reasons. We're in the middle of a sixth mass extinction up here. You know what that mass extinction is caused by? Humans. Human activity. Yeah. And so what do you think will happen? I think humans are going to just keep increasing in number and eventually we'll come to a point where we understand that we can't have keep increasing our population. The population will get steady. People will have less kids. And we'll be left with not as many animals and plants as we used to have. And they, the estimates are that there'll probably be about 30% of the plants and animals left on the earth that there was before humans came around. So that's a mass extinction. 70% gone is a mass extinction. So does that mean that 
Are we, are well, we, we are in the Cenozoic era. So the Mesozoic was kind of the age of the dinosaurs. Then all the dinosaurs died out. And then the Cenozoic is the age of the mammals. Because some mammals and birds survived this extinction. And insects, too. And so mammals, birds, and insects really took off after the dinosaurs were gone and could fill all those empty niches that the dinosaurs had. And so mammals started to diversify and get larger. And now there's a bunch of mammals and birds around where there used to be a bunch of dinosaurs. Humans evolved at the very end of this. And Are so we going to have to know this chart? Um, this is just, this chart is kind of a, uh, is kind of a summary <coughs> of everything it says in the reading. So after you do the reading, you'll know this chart. So, yes. This thing of Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous. Yeah, those are parts of the Mesozoic. Mm -hmm. So if you know dinosaurs at all, it's yeah. <laughs> kind of yeah. This chart doesn't really give you an idea of how long each of these eras were. That's what we're going to do outside here when we make our timeline. So this, th these are just pictures in the book of some of the different organisms that exist. You saw these types of organisms in the Precambrian, and these types of organisms in the Cambrian, in the uh, in the um, you know, the Paleozoic era. Look at these organisms. Ooh. Aren't they weird? Uh -huh. A little video, short video footage. Dense an array of new species appeared about five to six hundred million years ago. It's the beginning of the Paleozoic. All of today's animals are descended from the sea creatures of this era. Big swimming tongues. I like big swimming tongues. See, all these things are extinct, but we know they're there by their fossils. Let's go fossil hunting. Fossil hunting is a job you can have. You like that kind of thing. Paleontologist or an archaeologist. So the, the big forests of the Paleozoic, they're mostly ferns. Tree ferns as big as trees. I thought forests were in the Mesozoic. Uh, they're also in the Paleozoic. Dinosaurs in the Mesozoic. Look at these dinosaurs. We've watched the dinosaurs. Yeah. And then look at these. These are in the Cenozoic. These mammals. Little. The, a lot of the mammals that were in the Cenozoic went extinct. Look at the giant tree sloth. And these weird looking elephants. My favorite, my favorite was Ducky, I think. Human oh. hunters killed them. What a giant oh. tree sloth like hurt you? With bows and arrows and spears, there were there were there were mammals that were getting as big as the dinosaurs were, and then when humans started to evolve, they evolved arrows and spears. And it used to be that the only way to kill an animal was when another animal came and attacked you. So if you were a big tree sloth, you didn't worry about an animal that was a hundred yards over there. It didn't scare you. You just hung around. If it got closer, then you might start getting your distance. But if they stayed far away, you were fine. Well, so when we evolved spears and arrows, we could kill anything. Because nothing was afraid of something that was far away. So suddenly, we could drive, we could hunt, and we drove everything to extinction. And human population numbers went way up, and, and all these big mammals went extinct. Does that mean it, wasn't, it wasn't us that did it, it was the cavemen. Does that mean animals are going to get smaller since we kill like bigger animals? Yeah, they are already smaller. The only big animals left are some elephants and some bears and tigers, and they're all going extinct. The the big the great apes and all they're all in danger. All the big animals are in danger. Who was the last mammoth? That's a good question. 
What's that? The mammoths, the mammoths were these giant elephants, almost bigger than dinosaurs. That's a frozen baby mammoth they found in the uh, ice. Didn't they, like, weren't they, like, trying to, like, like... Yeah, like, Japanese, back to life Japanese like scientists are taking DNA from this, and they're going to get one of the nuclei from one of these cells and stick it in the nuclei of an egg from an elephant and then implant the developing embryo into an elephant and the elephant will give birth to a mammoth if it works. Why don't they and do it? And then a mammoth will grow up. We'll have a that? mammoth again. What are they going to do that? They're working on it right now. Yeah. As we speak. Can, when they do I'll that, can they, they make They haven't succeeded yet, but they will when eventually. They, when they do that, can they make a boy elephant and like a girl elephant? Yeah, if they, if they find a boy and a girl, they can make a boy and a girl and let them mate and we'll have mammoths again. <coughs> Bring back the mammoth. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> Wait, so what are they doing to get the mammoth back? They're taking one of the cells from this creature here. It's been preserved. Take the nucleus out of it. That's instructions for making a mammoth. Stick it in an elephant egg. Pull the nucleus of the elephant out. And now you have a mammoth egg. Implant that into the uterus of an elephant, and it might give birth to a mammoth. The baby the mom would be so confused. Yeah. <laughs> what is this awful thing? <laughs> Um, during the Mesozoic, you had continental drift, and the big continent of Pangaea broke apart into all the continents we have today over the next 250 million years. And that caused diversification because the animals were now kind of like the Galapagos Islands. They were isolated on their continents, and so they evolved differently on each continent. That's right, like, like South America after it split from Africa before it got to North America. It yeah, it's its own day. island there. Yeah. And look, India was its own island for a long time. So, and Australia is its own island. So that can cause evolution to go off in a different direction because you're isolated, your populations are isolated. So we get all these different creatures that way. That's why Australia is so diverse. That's right. It's got all these animals that you don't see anywhere else. It's like the Galapagos and Hawaii. And so I want you to read about this. We don't have time to go over it all. <laughs> But uh, this shows the different types of organisms and when they did well. Look at, look at insects. Insects is, is this big, thick one right here. Ah. A lot of insects around that area. Insects really rule really the earth. Yeah. Uh, more of them than there What's are, the but. things on ice age called? The mammoth? Huh? Say cockroaches and mammoth? Mice. What's the little one? The yeah. One that, the baby? Here's what I want to do. We're going to make a timeline outside. Were you asleep, Steph? You were. You know, I like the etymology of Cambrian. Here you go. Let me give this to some. That is. I think it came from. I think when the geologists remember they were, they were in Wales. And the Latin name for Wales was. I'm going to give you a little sign. Cambria. Should I stop videotaping? You get a little sign. Everybody gets a sign. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And that's not sign. I have exactly enough. I can't. Everyone. Oh. Oh, I get ready to make. Am I gonna get? Oh, no. All right. You get that? I don't know where I'm at. Okay. Should I stop videotaping? Yes.